temptation of falling into sexual sin. Sexual sin is a terrible sin. Eshe agbere, eshe to, to lagbara, eshe buruku ni ti o ye ki omolorun gbalaye. Let's be on our feet. We are going to read together 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 18. Let's all be on our feet. Please put it on screen. Open your Bibles. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 18. We are going to take it together once it's on screen after the count of three. And I want us to read with a loud voice. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 from only verse 18. Let's have it. Let's be on our feet. Thank God for your legs. Some people cannot use their leg. They don't even have. After the count of three, are we set? One, two, and three. Let's go. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Let's read it again. One, two, and let's go. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Now let's look at it from the Message Bible. I have it on my note here, the Message Bible. I love that Bible uh, version very well. Then we'll summarize with NLT. Let's read this one. One, two, and let's go. There is a sense in which sexual sin are different from all others. In sexual sin, we violate the sacredness of our own body. These bodies that were made for God-given and God-modeled love for becoming one with another. Hmm. I love this. It says sexual sin violates the sacredness. Of our own bodies. You know when you say something is sacred. It means that that thing is special. is holy. Now it's just like. If you know the plate. You have. Everybody has special plates. You know. Uh, my children have broken two of our special plates. We, are, we remain only one. Three. I love that plate very well. I like eating from it. But two have. So that. that you know. Look at as important. As, as, as precious as that plate is, is to me. Let somebody now. Pull in it. And they say, Pastor, don't worry. Ah, ah, it's a mistake. We'll wash it for you. We'll use um, um, IPO. We'll use, let me not advertise for IPO. We'll use, uh, uh, no, no, we're advertising the same thing. we we'll use, uh, what do you call them generally? Detergents. We use um, stain remover. You know, we use every, we'll soak it for one year. You know, even if they soak it and do all the washing, if you see the color, the same place, that same color anywhere again, what will happen to you? You may not even want to eat from it again. Now, our body is preserved for God. It's a sacred place. God dwells in us. God doesn't dwell in the building. He's only here because we, we dedicated this place to him. And he said, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. But originally, he lives in the hu human body. So anytime you commit sexual sin, if a person commits sexual sin, a person commits sexual sin. The Bible says he defiles that body. Now show us NLT before we sit down. NLT before we sit down. NLT. NLT. We are waiting. Thank you. One, two, and let's go together. Let's go. Run from sexual sin. No other sin is so clearly affects the body eh, as this one does. For sexual immorality he says, sin against your own body. Look at this. Now, sit down. You know, King James used uh, modified English, flee. But this one says, no, show me now, NLT. I, I seen it. It says, run from sexual sin. Run. Anytime you hear about sin that has to do with sex, run. The Bible says, run. Don't stay. Don't fall into it. Why? He said, no other sin is so clearly, so, uh, sorry, no uh, other sin, so clearly affects the body. Now, what does that mean? It means that sexual sin affects the human body. Whoever commits sexual sin, it will affect you.
Now, there are so many diseases that people are suffering of today. It's not just because uh, it was inherited. Some are as a result of this. Uh, we'll talk better as we go on. He said, for sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. It's a sin against your own body. And I will tell you why as we go on. Let me start by saying... For sexual purpose, with anyone you are not completely married to. Now, pay attention to my words. I deliberately what is sexual sin because anybody can ask you. I've shown you scriptures now. The Bible says, "Run from it." Because no sin clearly affects the body as this one does. Now, which means that there are some sin that does not affect your body. It's a sin against God, but it does not affect your body. But the Bible says sexual sin affects your body. So what is sexual sin? It is when you offer your body for sexual with anyone you are not completely married to. Now, somebody will say, can a person be partially married? I will explain. I will explain. I will explain. Can I go on to explain now? Now, you know, we all have different cultures. We are, we are born, you know, we, we didn't determine our place of birth. We didn't determine our parents. We choose our friends. We choose our partners. In fact, we choose where we live at times. But God chose our parents for us. Nobody, can, nobody would ever say, you know, this one's we watch in the Nollywood movie. Yeah, me. Yeah, me. Yeah, me. Yeah, me. Yeah, You know, you have watched Nollywood City. So, you said, Mubeleda, me. So, okay. Or, do I grab a can? No, no. Nobody determines that one. It is God that determines uh, the kind of place. So, appreciate your culture. In our various cultures, we have principles that make that makes us to be confirmed as married people. Am I communicating? Now, I'm a Yoruba man. The Igbos have theirs. The, the Aousas have theirs. Now, that's why the moment we are now born again, the Bible has un unified us. What unifies us? The Bible. What unifies us? The Bible. So, we have culture. That is where we are born. Then, but the moment we are born again, this unifies us. There's, there's this thing trending now that you see that a man will be dating a lady, propose to a lady, how are you? I love you. Can we start a relationship? Normally, every relationship should start with friendship. That's the first thing. That's the Bible way. Every relationship should not, does not start with marriage. Every relationship starts with what? Friendship. It will now mature to a point where you can say, I think I will need to have you as my partner for life. Then you now go to formalize. Now, that you are, you are friends, everybody know you as partners, does not mean you are married. Now, you should not be having sex when you have not done the proper thing. Am I communicating? Because so many today's Christians don't understand that. See, this Bible is the pattern. Now, this is how you must do it if you want God's kind of result. So, you have been dating yourselves, you are not supposed to have sex until you have formalized it. And how do we formalize? Go to Bible pattern. You will see when they came to seek the hand of Rebecca in marriage. We had, who did they go to first? They went to the parents. The first place is not to now say, okay, now I've been dating sister, sister, sister Faith for some years. Now the next thing now is let me go to church for pastor to join us. No pastor should join you when parental consent is not yet approved. Did you hear me? Except for three things, which I will tell you as I go on. So the first thing to do is to go to parents. Now, you know why you should go to parents? So many errors are going on now. I was telling one of our sons in church, what's your name? He told me, my name is Ayomide Eze. Ah. I said, but I know you as Ayomide Eze Allah. He said, my daddy said we should be our Eze. I said, see, there's going to be tro trouble in the future. Who knows how wide your family will be. You might give back to children, they may not be in Nigeria. They will not know that they are related to the Asialas. 
Now, and this is maybe you give back to a girl, he's in Canada, he grows up, her name is uh, 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 Tomiwa Eze. And maybe somewhere, uh, 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 Tochuku gave back to a son, a, a son and he, uh, his name is Chuku, uh, uh, you know, his Chuku is his father, his uh, name is Chisom. So it's Chisom, uh, what again? Chisom what? Eziala. So if Chisom Eziala meets with Ayomide Eze, and they started re re relationship together without parental consent. What do you think will happen? They will give back to abomination. Am I communicating? Because I hear so many things going on now. Some will say, I'm, I don't want to bear the family name anymore. I'm going to be bearing my husband's name. You are not thinking of the future. If you think of the future, you will know that the way things are going, anything can happen. They can meet themselves anywhere. And before you say, let's begin to trace, there must be, there may be baby in the stomach. So that's why the first thing that needs to be done is parental consent. You take that person to your parents, and you know, parents of today too, you too don't allow money to close your eyes. You have collected bribe, collected everything, you have not seen the guy. Wait for the person that they say, mommy, mommy, uh, my fiance says I should give you. My... Let him come. In our days, in the, the younger day, we ask, Omotanie, whose son are you? Whose daughter are you? They will find out, they will find questions. The Igbos do it so well too. They will ask questions. At times, some people will even lift somebody up to go and find out. Whose son are you? They will trace your route. That's the stand, the Bible standard. So they went to that family. They asked Rebecca, you know, she was willing. Then they said, let's go to your parents. Getting to the parents, you have established the first one. Once the parents give approval, it does not mean you are married though. They accepted you, introduction. You know, today, uh, these uh, people that ask you to do party are expanding because of they want to make money. Ordinary introduction is like engagement now. And you see that after ordinary introduction, bring your family to come and meet our family. The next thing, sister is pregnant. No, it's not supposed to be. That's not the Bible pattern. The Bible pattern is you honor your parents. Let them bless you. Wait for your engagement day. Let them receive the things they demand. Let them pray for you. Then you go and to the church so that you honor God with your body. Am I communicating? You honor God with your body. I won't have sex until I take my spouse before the Lord for God to bless my marriage. It's honoring God with it. Why do we do the legal aspect? It's just so for in case of anything wants to come up in the future. You legalized your marriage. Now, but what am I saying? Sexual sin is when you involve in sexual practice with anyone you are not completely married to. Now you understand what it means to be completely married. A lot of things are going on in the church today. And you know, pastors are trying to talk, but people are not listening anymore. And if you talk too much, the next thing they look for a bigger church where they will not even know their status at all. But see, sexual sin is terrible. Let's go to the next question. What is the danger of sexual sin? What is the danger of sexual sin? Listen, sexual sin. Should I go on? Opens the door for the devil. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 8. It opens the door for the devil to operate. It opens the door. Because it's a great violation of God's instruction. And it immediately breaks the edge of protection, preventing the devil from being able to reach you. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 8. It breaks the edge. Now, there's a fence around every child of God's life. There's this wall of protection. Sexual sin creates hole on it. Look at it. It says when you dig a wall, a well, you fall in it. But when, when you demolish an old wall, you could be beaten by a snake. Show me the King James Version. I love you from the King James Version. King James says, He that digs a, dig a pit shall fall into it, and whoso break an edge, whoso break an edge, look at it, whoso breaketh an edge, a serpent shall bite him. The devil is that serpent waiting behind to attack. Always waiting, looking for means by which he will attack. 
That's why I get it right. Many years ago, I, I was conducting deliverance on one young lady. And the demon in her started manifesting. You know what made me to conduct deliverance for her? She said she used to see evil spirits. When she's walking, they'll be walking with her. And they'll be telling her to sleep with men. He said, sir, any man that has sex with me can never become anything meaningful again in life. Sexual sin is break, it breaks the edge. It's breaking the edge of protection around your life. The devil has been looking for ways to get you. He can't get you until he succeeds to break that edge. That's why I go and find out. All those that are involved in fornication, adultery, go and find out before they used to be balanced at times. Hey, me, 10 years. Could he get beyond in life? Eh? Because the devil came in. And one thing with the devil is that once he enters, he operates very fast. So sexual sin breaks the edge. I wrote here, beloved, I have seen several believers suffer under terrible demonic attack because they allowed sexual sin to open a major door in their life. At such time, there is, un, there is there's, listen, at such time, there is unusual, oh, sorry, there is usually an exchange of what those parties involved carry. Now, look at this. When two people are having sex together, there is what we call divine exchange. That's why you see that in marriage, when a man and a woman live together for some time, they begin to talk alike. They begin to look alike. And if care is something, if you look very well, they begin to have the same problem. Now, during sex, sexual intercourse, you know what happens? There's what we call exchange. What is in the man will flow into the woman. What is in the woman will flow into the man. That's why you need to be careful. Don't let the devil break the edge. He's always looking for something, means by which to operate in your life and rob you. Now, I wrote something down and I want us to see it from the life of this man they call Judah in uh, Genesis chapter 38, 15 to 18. Genesis 38, 15 to 18. Put it on screen for us to see. Because some of you young brothers of now are not born again. You are coming to church pretending to be one but deceiving ladies. You are opening the edge. You are opening the edge. The enemy, are, the enemy is coming in and robbing you of your glorious destiny. Look at this. When Judah saw her, he taught to her, uh, he, he taught her to be an harlot because she had covered her face. And he turned unto her by the way and said, Go to, I pray thee, let me come in unto you. For he knew not that she was the, his daughter-in-law. And he said, what will thou give me? Can you see there's always an exchange? That thou mayest come in unto me. No, no sex is without an exchange. And he said, I will send thee a kid from the flock. And she said, will thou give me a pledge till thou send it? The man was just acting, you know, like an innocent man. Will thou give me a pledge till thou send Move on, move on, move on. Next verse. And he said, what pledge shall I give thee? She demanded by herself. She said, number one, thy signet, thy ring. That means your ring is your originality. What makes you who you are? It's just like you say, there's salt, but the salt does not have taste. The salt is useless. A lot of people have become empty body because of sexual sin. The first thing he asked for, give me your ring, your ring, your authority. There used to be a man in our area here. Hold on with that scripture for me. Nobody knew. he was. People knew him as a Christian, a believer. He does business. But we just noticed that this man doesn't, up to as I'm telling you, this man is not prospering. I don't want to describe his job. You will know him. He's not prospering at all. He has been on Liberty Road for many years. Do you know that one, one particular year, there was a lady that we were holding deliverance for. And Lee and me, she knew a jade. What kind of job are you doing? boy. Ah, as he mentioned his name, I said I know him. I know this guy. He has been in this business for several years. 
and he's not prospering. He's struggling. Only will he will he prosper? She borrow pay. She borrow pay on road building of it. Oh, my boss only. So so and so, yeah, lumba on she. On that it go go. On the go the leg pad up. After I finish praying for that lady, cast out the demon. That lady now is a pastor's wife. I now went to see that young man to ask him, Chair, do you know so so and so person? He said, Yes. Tell me the truth. Tell me. Have you had anything with that person before? He said, eh, eh, No, really. I think you better talk truth. He now said, Yes. Yes, I had a uh, uh, pastor. She, in your ma, Ruby, in your name, in your name, in your name. Ah! We are a feeling to look over me from where. We are breaking bad rough. We are feeling to look over here. That guy is walking around till this morning. So, sexual intercourse. Look at this. The lady said, Give me your signet. That's why I pray for you. May you not fall to the trap of sexual sin in the name of Jesus. Now look at the second one. It says, and your bracelet. What do you use bracelet for? It's for beauty. Bracelet signifies glory. Sir, life is not sweet without glory. Now look at what she demanded for. Give me your bracelet. Now, and I've told you there's a law of exchange that goes on. Unusual law of exchange is activated when you are having sex. That's why you must be careful. What do you think? Uh, how do you think this Yahoo God guys do it now? You see that they will have sex with a lady. They say they have taken something from her. Give her good money. Take her to the bus stop. By the time they turn back, she will just run mad. They've taken what they want to take. They have gone. They may not hear of them again. I have several of them like that on my phone. There's a case now I'm handling with one. My boy, I to she now started getting some dreams because I believe her mother her mother is praying seriously for her when she told me what she was I told her you better get out of that man's house now because with the vision you yourself have seen the man wants to use your life he said give me your bracelet now look at the third one after he took his bracelet the bible says he now took thy staff he said give me thy staff your staff is what makes you balanced. Now, what is your staff? Opportunities. Because without opportunity, you cannot be balanced. Now, can you imagine any talk about originality? Talk about glory. Talk about opportunity. Kiloku. Answer me now. Korofoni. That's why the Bible says, he that breaks the edge. Because some of you guys will be saying, ah, Pastor, eh, hey, Momini. Ah, sorry, I sorry for you. Continue to lori obirin. Bubu egbe enra le won ko le won ko meta merin o yi ko kokan ori obirin lo ni. So, there's a law of divine exchange that is activated. Children of God, it is important we know that every single listen, every single sinful sex establish a demonic entry door. Every single sexual sin establish a demonic entry door that makes those involved to suffer loss in destiny. Every single sexual sin establish a demonic door. There will be freedom to what? Go in and come out. Go in and come out. Go in and come out. So every, that's why you must be very, very careful. And you must be very, very sensitive as a child of God. We are still going on. Sex outside the marriage covenant is sinful. It is important you know that family, okay, like I said, family introduction does not mean you are married and should not be seen as a license for sex. It should not be seen as a license for sex because the devil is seeking for an opportunity to open the door of your life so that they can pick something from you. Don't allow it. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 8. Show me 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 8. It said, Neither let us commit fornication. 
as some of them committed and did what? And fell in one day. How many? Three and twenty thousand. NLT version. NLT version. NLT version. Now, and we must not engage in sexual immorality. As some of them did, causing what? 23,000 of them to die. How, how many days? In one day. Now, it's to show you how fast and smart the devil works. Bam! 23,000 people died because they allowed sexual sin. That's why you must understand it is not every beautiful girl handsome guy that you see going out. Some of them are handsome battles. Beautiful demons. Looking for people's life to destroy. Watch where you are going. Let me now go deeper. How then can I conquer sexual temptation? How? How can I conquer sexual temptation? The first most important thing to do is to have uh, sorry to avoid falling into sexual sin is for you not to set yourself up don't set yourself up how don't set yourself up for it how be careful of the kind of message you send to your memory bank be careful of the kind of message you send to your memory bank Show me Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Now listen. As this phone has memory card, in every human being, we have memory bank. There's a part of us that store information, that process information, and makes information to be wider, passes it to the body, making it willing for us to want to perform what we are thinking. Look at this. Proverbs. Where is that Proverbs? I want to show you something. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. It says, Keep thy heart with all diligence. Yes. For out of it are what? The issues of life. Now, it means that there are some of you, the kind of books you read, the kind of movies you watch, the kind of people you are close to, they send you bad signals. Imagine you are always watching porn movies. Oh, this man and this woman is making love. <laughs> it interests you. <laughs> yes, we know that we are in a corrupt world. But don't allow it to stay. If you see such things, delete them. Don't delight in watching these things. If you are watching them, do you know what? It's sending a signal and a message into your memory. And can I tell you the fact? <laughs> Our memory is stronger. You'll be shocked that somebody that offended, was it not today? Today, yes, it was today. I finished service, I was counseling somebody, and the person was telling me what somebody did to him over 10 years ago. To her, over 10 years ago. And she, you know what she told me? She said, I pray that God should help me to be able to remove it from my mind. 10 years ago, offense. Some of you, you are the one setting yourself up, you are the one making your, your brain. To be thinking and listen you are human the day i had respect for the human mind i read one book in there uh, in, a te- in a, it was a university textbook of uh, this philosophy textbook the person said if you feel pain in your mind you will feel it in your body the person now said that's look at this they want to give you injection what makes you afraid is because you are looking at it. He said, close your eyes and tell the doctor, inject. You'll be shocked. He said, but if you open your eyes and I say, this injection is painful, it will not touch you, you'll be crying. Yeah, doctor, doctor, doctor. Because your mind is prepared for pain. It's expecting pain. So even without it touching you, you are crying. I've seen an adult that they are holding, the, they are trying to hold the adult. 30 minutes watching bad adults, they are totally over by better air. Ejo, 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 ah, injection, come. Huh? 
And you see some women, they are operating. I remember when my wife went in to uh, deliver our last child. They've already told us, Pastor, it's going to be elect. They call it elective operation. The doctor will give you date. They will not allow you to labor at all. So by the time we got to the hospital, my wife was injected with an atesia that would make her to sleep. They gave her overdose. My wife didn't sleep. You know why? She was prepared. And she was asking the doctor, as they were opening her, are you not yet true? Doctor told me all this. Is, are you not yet true? Doctor, what is happening? What is going on? Are you not yet true? Where is my baby? And to Alabaya at an attest. And you see some people, they just give one small dose. You will start sleeping before they go to the <laughs> So don't set yourself up. There are some things when you you should be able to project. If I continue watching this thing, if I continue watching this thing, I may not be able to control it. That's why I told you about last month. Every one of us has the ability, the power to say no. The, when God created us, he, he gave us the power of choice. That's why on the last day, see, the devil will be as innocent as, as, as ever. I said, it was the devil said, I didn't touch you. I only showed you. Did I help you to remove your trouser? Did I carry you to his house? So the first thing is, don't set yourself up. Let me tell your neighbor, don't set yourself up. Avoid anything that will stir up sexual desire in you prematurely. Anything that can stir up in you premature sexual desire. You know that you don't have a partner. You are not yet married. You know that this person is still your fiancé. You are not yet married. Don't stir, don't arouse his or her emotion for sex. You say, yes, I'm born again. I'm a bro. I'm a bro. My, my, my fiancé is coming to visit me. And you too, bro, sister, fiancé. You are going to visit your, your Christian brother. You are wearing micro mini skirt. You say, bro, brother, brother, Kuli, you are wearing micro mini skirt. You, everybody must come to an understanding. Nobody is living in the spirit. We are spirits, we are living in the flesh. And when you are living in the flesh, flesh is flesh. That's why you cannot be so spiritual that you will not feel that you are hungry. Abi, have we seen anybody that is not hungry? Even Jesus, when he was on earth, the Bible says he was hungry. He needed food. That was why the devil came to him and said, why not turn stone to bread? Don't set yourself up. As a man thinketh in his heart, the Bible says so he see. Number two, you want to conquer sexual sin. What's number two? Avoid deep friendship. Hmm. With sinful minded people. Take note of this number two. Avoid deep friendship with sinful minded people. People who will encourage you to do the things that will lure you into sexual sin. Avoid them. Friendship is not by force. Can I tell you this truth? Friendship is by choice. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 20. He said, He that walketh with the wise man shall be wise, but a companion on fools shall be destroyed. Some people fall into sexual sin because of the kind of friends they keep. Imagine, Olore Kubai Rashie, Kubai Rashie is a bank. Olore Kubai ni Murale, Murale te mi muti be rakon, wani muti be tojwe jakon. Obi nong kile jawa ni ah muti tojwe jakon fwe, wala ike jai. Iru ore u shiwe ni. Mwana baso fu wano sister ah baba la ikon wa umato tojwe dada. Chori ira nuto kwe yenche yen oko yen kanchera nuni. That's why the Bible says, show me that proverb. Let them let everybody see. Proverbs 13 20. He that walketh with the wise. He that walketh with the wise, with wise men, shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. 
When I made up my mind that I want to be a Christian and I want to make heaven, see, I chose the kind of friends I keep. I know pastors that are immor immoral pastors. I know them. They are plenty. On, was it not on Wednesday? I took my daughter to our, our center where she went to write her exam. So while we're outside waiting for them to be true, two pastors, one pastor, so our pastor Prince, we were now discussing, and our pastor came, pastor Prince, we, so while I was, it became a lecture ground, I started lecturing them. Then one pastor said, Pastor Prince, we, do you know what I saw? I went to preach in a church in Ilori, a big church. In the hotel where they put me, the pastor said the hotel where they put him, they gave him one room. He said, he came out in, in the evening and he saw the pastor, general overseer of the church, going into another room with a lady that is not his wife. Ah. He said, the pastor saw him and smiled. Thinking that, the pastor thought that he has got the message. So the second day, as he finished ministering with them, he was going to his room. Before he entered, he saw a lady at the entrance. He said, the lady said, sir, uh, Gio said I should spend the night with you. Ah. He said, I didn't hear you. He said, the Gio said I should come and spend the night with you. Is he as part of an honorarium or what? <laughs> so he said, he told the lady, okay, hold on, I'm coming. He tried to call the pastor. He didn't pick his call. He entered the room, carried his laptop and told the lady, please, you can go in, I'm coming. He said, he now went to the reception, sat there till the next day. Very early in the morning, the lady woke up. The hotel receptionist was asking her, Ba Onishi Pastor Doom. He said they didn't know that she was at the reception. The receptionist was asking him, Ba Onishi Pastor Doom. He said the lady now said, Mi Roke Ru Pastor Tenikin Lo Bayan, Mi Roke Ru Pastor Waneo. O Waya Raya Tilevi Mo. He said as he was about to go, he wanted to escape from there. The hotel manager came and said, Sir, uh, you have not paid for the room. He said, No, I am the host of so so and so church. He said, He called the pastor. The pastor did not pick up. So he called some people, they gathered money for him. He paid for the hotel and went to the pastor's office. Pastor, what happened? You didn't pay my hotel bill again. He said, The pastor said, As long as I'm concerned, you are no longer my guest. Do you know why? It is because he didn't open his eyes very well. If he had opened his eyes very well, he would have known. People who are immoral, in one way or the other, their speech or their action will expose them. Don't let people choose you as friends. You have this right. This life is your life. It's not a joint life, now your own life. You have right of, to whom those you want to relate with. See, I hear. So, that's number two. Let's look at the third thing that will help us to escape the temptation of sexual sin. Number three, always remember that you are a spirit. You have a soul, but lives in a body. And that body can be steered up for sex when it comes too close to the opposite sex. I will read it again. Shall I come again? Always remember that you are a spirit. You have a soul but lives in a body. And that body can be steered up for sex when it becomes too close to the opposite sex. Now look up if you are finished writing. My mentor told us a story. I won't forget. He said when they were in the university, their school fellowship president used to say, I'm, I'm too anointed to fall. Me, I cannot fall. He said, so sisters in the church, in the fellowship, we come to pass to brother's room, bro's room. Because me too have been a bro, that kind of bro before, but not that type of bro. When you, when you are bro, there's a way we speak in tongue. Yeah, God, God, you know, all this bro style. Sisters respect us. So my mentor said, this particular day, he went to the brother's room to greet him. He said, as he opened the door, he met bro and a sister on the bed. 
They were not doing anything. The sister laid down on the bed. The brother also laid down on the bed. He said, he now call him, bro, please come. Ah. The brother followed him. He said, sir, in my place, we don't used to use the tail of a, uh, a snake to each our nose, sir. In your king, he walker, a beauty of Cadeni, Kulu, very new in Ah, but in Koshi, he said, The brother said, Oh, brother, you are in the lower realm of the spirituality. At the realm that we have got into, see this our flesh, we have conquered it. Can I tell you this truth? Nobody has conquered the flesh. I come again. There is nobody on this earth that has conquered his flesh. The battle between us and our flesh is a lifelong battle. One bottle. Last bottle. To batun lo to batun bo boya to batun dola o le ja wu flo ma ri second time a ore ah she bi la dubo yin e ba e ba me fun ni merin adika last bottle to batun die ijo ke ke keje ke a tu koja wa tun ba awon re kan eh ore ore wa tun dua o wo ma chano ni an ma jin le gan gini gan gini ko e we ba me fun ni tutu kan tutu kan tutu kan e de mo awon eyan ma nya ra fun eyan lo ni Ori buruku, jori relo. Me mo be ti notice. E bo ori buruku ofe ni. Ori relo won. You be shocked. Da visa ansin ko link come da wo visa. Ko si en to ma de o ticket. Boy woni mama e jeku. Wa re ni ya elo. Tori kon bo wa jo nje ofe. Last bottle. So this brother told my mentor, hmm, until one day, they just saw that his sister came and told the fellowship she's pregnant. They had to stop his education because his sister got pregnant. See, you are living in the flesh. If you sit down too close to an opposite sex, your body can move. That's why. Don't be careless with yourself. If you don't want to fall into temptation of sexual sin. This I said, and don't worry, I will sleep in my fiance's house. I will be at the sitting room. He will be in the bedroom. You won't know how you will get to the bedroom. I'm telling you, you won't know how you will get to the bedroom to the bedroom. It may be let us join our hands in prayer that we start. From joining our hands, you say, let us pray head to head chest to chest before you know it everybody have known us together now do your best to avoid closeness to the opposite sex I wrote something here I want to read it out seek counsel for spiritual mentor, from spiritual mentors and begin to pray more in that direction if you notice you have a strong sexual feeling towards somebody that is not your partner you notice that ah, i'm just having this sexual this strong sexual timothy this is time timothy brother ah, ah, what is going on seek counsel don't conceal it to yourself and don't stay close to that person no matter how close that person is coming be running no matter how close that person is coming be running that was the mistake that i'm not made he was having sexual desire, strong one for his sister. He went to tell Adonija. Adonija said, I, I pretend, let her come. If she come, you will not be able to control it. Don't trust yourself to that point. You know, be saying, ah, ah, she be me, ni. Ma kon so far, me can stop. Ah, ni, ki, ni. O je be video game. Let's go to the next. Number five. Abi? Four, okay. Number four. This number four is a little bit closer to. When you notice 
that your sexual desire is becoming so strong as a youth or a married person towards somebody that is not your spouse. Do you like one? Do your best to avoid closeness with that person. When you notice that your sexual desire is becoming so strong as a youth or a married person towards somebody that you are not, that is not your spouse, do your best to avoid closeness with that person. If you notice this one that I'm saying, as point number four, run. Like we can, we say, run. No. Don't say, ah, I don't know. Anytime this sister comes around, I'm always feeling this thing. It's like I should just grab her. It's like I should just grab her. It's like I should just grab her. And you, the sister is still coming. You better run. Because it means that something inside of you is being stirred by that person's presence. Number five. Always remind yourself what you stand to lose if you fall to sexual temptation. Mm. Always remind yourself. Always remember. And I told you, you might lose your signet. You might lose your bracelet. You might lose your staff. Let it always be in your mind. Aha. Ha, this pleasure of few minutes. Timalo for Timalo for Timo Shekini Loto. Ah, Timba sauce signet in me. No, Mulimari Bamo Timba sauce staff me. No, Timo de Pada saw bracelet. In fact, the Bible says when Judah got back to that place to pay his pledge and collect his signet, bracelet, and staff, she was no longer there. Don't think of the pleasure, the sweetness of that few seconds. Think of what you will lose. Okay, you are married. You are having extramarital affairs. Think of how if this thing eventually blow. Think of if she eventually become pregnant and say, I am not aborting. Because see, I always tell people, if you are only thinking one side, you will fail you. Always be thinking positive and negative. You think the two. So that you wait, it will help you to be balanced. And just like one thing I always say, I learned that from the Bible, I always say there is nothing hidden that will not be exposed. And you know the Bible cannot lie. There is nothing hidden that will not be exposed. Nothing hidden that will not be exposed. One of our fathers in the faith, Though he's, he has now rededicated his life to Christ. He said, as a reverend, he used to keep a girlfriend very far in the interior of Ibadan. His wife didn't know. Somebody now joined their church. Gave back to a child. They wanted to do naming ceremony. Pastor was to go and name the child. He discovered that the person is living at the second floor. We now ask you, sir, how did you do the naming? <laughs> that was what led him back to God. He now went to church to confess. Think of what you will lose. Think of what Toba lo yi ko. toba uma yi Number, number six. How to conquer the temptation of sexual falling into sexual sin? Increase your study in the Word of God, in order to increase your hunger to please God and to do His will. Increase your study in the Word, in the Word of God, in order to increase. You know, the more of God's Word you study, the more your hunger to please God increases. 
the more of your of the word of God you study, the more your hunger to to please God in shori bo ba se n ka oro Olorun si ni ipo n gbe ati se fe Olorun se mama o mama ko si ninu okan e Let's take number 7 I'm rushing because of time I'll take number 7 from 1 Corinthians 7 verse 2 How to avoid falling into the into the temptation of sexual sin 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 2 KJV King James I'm waiting for you the Bible says nevertheless okay nevertheless to avoid fornication what's the answer let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband if you feel that ah sir this temptation is too much I can't cope go and marry Awa Yoruba man ni aki ni ki omo de koma dete. Shukbon koma anon te kwe. Onwa da no go gwe ni. By the time ti ya wwe babes ni bere uwa be. Aratou le yem awa le. Aoutou ni. But it's a temporary answer. You are saying sir I can't come. Go and get married. Now I have two questions I want to rush. What if he or she. Oh, sorry, sorry, not the, this one. Three questions. If a person has fallen into sexual sin before, will he be given another chance? If a person has fallen into sexual sin before, will he be given another chance? The answer is yes, he will. But he will need to build up himself in order to gain the trust of God, both God and men again. Yes. See, if you fall into sexual sin, you will lose both the trust of God and the trust of men. Apart from the spiritual punishment. But if you now say, ah, Lord, forgive me. I will not do it. Like a pastor told me last week, he says, I fell. I'm back. I don't, I'm not going to do it again. God can forgive you. If you're in that category here, God can forgive you. But you will now need to work hard with all loyalty to gain the trust of God. And the trust of those that have seen you as an immoral person. Now, it will move us to the next question. What if he or she had a child from that sexual sin? What should he or she do? Mm, good question. A person commits sexual sin and a child came forth. What she do, should he or she do? I wrote here. The first thing is for him or her to seek to reconcile with God. That's the first thing. Settle with God. Now, after you must have settled with God, look at the next one. Once this is achieved, he or she should accept responsibility of the child. You don't have to kill that child. Don't use another sin to cover another sin. Some will say, ah, 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 we, we say, to more, muti loyu, muti loyu, kini ka sheba, eje ka lo share. You know, abortion is a sin. That one is now sin of murder. No, don't use the sin of murder to now cover the sin of fornication. Accept responsibility. This thing has happened. This child I must take care of. Am I communicating? Don't hate that child. It's not the fault of that child. Don't see that child as ah, this child came to life to stop my ambition and vision. We have one of our staffs. We just employed her. We met her crying one day. She was crying and crying and crying. We now ask her, why are you crying? He said, my daddy said, we can't train you for now. We have to train your younger one. You have become pregnant. You have a child. Whatever we need to give you, we'll be using it to train your child. He said, daddy, who there will make him jam? Who will make him jam? Who to be resinous? After you have accepted responsibility, what's the next thing? Seek God's face over that individual. Do not allow sexual sin or pregnancy to lure you into untimely marriage. Can you hear me? Hmm. 
That somebody is pregnant for you does not mean you should marry her. Yes. She may not be the will of God for your life. And that somebody is pregnant for you does not mean marry her now. She may be the will of God, but it may not be your time to marry. See, some people may never be balanced again. You have not fed yourself, you will be buying baby food. When you want it, huh? shop right. When you want it, huh? shop right. I want to eat it, I want Am I communicating? Because so many people have complicated their lives. One plane crashed. I had the ah, Holy Spirit help me with this time. I had the they wrote the documentary. You know what made the plane to crash? I won't mention the the, the airline. So I, it was overlooked. They flew from Potako. They were going to Abuja. They overcrowded the plane on the road. 20 minutes to get into Abuja, they crashed. So many destinies are crashing because of overload. Ah, oh, Tony, so many destinies have crashed because of overload. Maybe instead of both of you to reach to a bargain, I'm sorry, you have prayed that time that I had sex with you, I backslide. Now we have a child. I'm, now I've rededicated my life. You to go and rededicate your life. Now we've prayed. We can marry ourselves. But I can't feed myself. Talk less of feeding you and feeding baby. Let's reach to a conclusion. Let both families sit. If you should be sending this baby to school, you cannot be my responsibility now. You two, go find your own. Let me go find out. Let's be taking care of this baby. If God said we will marry, fine. Am I communicating? Because you might enter marriage un- unprepared. Are you not offended this morning? I'm speaking as your father. So many mistakes. Now, 10 years, and if care is not taken, you may not go to school again. If care is not taken, you can't develop your life again. And can I tell you, child raising is big expenses. Come, come and ask me. Even me that I prepare to go get married, child raising is not easy. Is it easy, man? It's you no know, easy. Or the easy. Go easy. Even if you say they should you put them down for government to train them, it's not easy. You have to plan before you go into marriage. And that's why you ladies of today to think very well. Now let me know if I whip this one. Last question. Is there any biblical punishment for sex, sex, sexual of, sex offenders in the Bible? Is there any punish, punishment for sex offenders in the Bible? 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 9 to 12. First Corinthians chapter 5, 9 to 12. We are going to read it from the NLT Bible. And I want all of us to see it. NLT. 9 to 13, sorry. First Corinthians 5, 9 to 13. NLT. 9 to 13. 9. <laughs> Let's read together. 1, 2, and 3. Let's go. When I wrote to you before, I told you not to associate with people who indulge in sexual sin. Let's read together verse 10. Let's go. But I wasn't talking about unbelievers who indulge in sex, sexual sin or are greedy or cheat people or worship idols. You would have to leave this world to avoid people like that. Do you know what this one means? Paul said, I gave you instruction. If anybody is in sexual sin, don't associate with them. He said, but in verse 10, I'm not talking about unbelievers. Unbelievers is their own lifestyle. If you don't want to relate with unbelievers that does this, it means that you have to leave this world. But look at verse 11. Let's go again. One, two, let's go. I meant that you are not to associate with anyone who claims to be a believer, yet indulge in sexual sin 
or is greedy or worship idols or is abusive or is a drunkard or cheats people don't even eat with such people wait is it not in your bible now, can you see that those churches, when they say they'll come to the altar, they said that they do it in a apostolic faith. Your husband told me that time. He said they will say, Brother Solomon, Brother Solomon, Sister Rebecca, Lapa our finally satani lowo fun iji ato o wa no bible bible ni ka fa won le satani lowo fun iji ya eran ara won so eni to ba ki brother solomon a fa le satani lowo na o wa no bible se bo la kai Bibeli ni a o gbodo se kini a o gbodo ba won soro a si gbodo ba won jeun That's the truth for you to just for you to see how terrible sexual sin is Because this one that some of you in our church used to do you just come and meet me papa mo ti se yin Ti ba ti gbo papa mo ti se yin I want to move my phone, Louis. My wife, I look. I'm going to let you. Oh Lord, no let you. Hello, babe. I'm going to talk to you. So you're at. You're at 30 minutes. So my father, I'm going to let you set you. But you know what used to pay me is that their life don't used to be balanced. They don't understand that marriage itself is a weight. If you are not ready, don't enter. Marriage is not a, it's not a toy. It's not, it's not like you are going to Dubai for holiday. Everything about marriage is expensive. I'm not threatening you. <laughs> Because even the Bible has said, if you cannot hold yourself, go and get married. But the thing that is behind this is more than seven. Do a jello. Go where S. Aramin Lemi Ribi Dasi. Arema Wale. When it gets to a point in marriage, we are closing. <laughs> Hey, she When my children were still younger than this, I and my wife we used to have malaria drug, antibiotics, warm drug at home extra and I used to make sure at least that we have 3,000 naira that I keep somewhere those days so 3,000 those days because a child may sleep well eat well and the second day morning begin to run temperature yesterday I was telling my children I said praise God for your dad no electric man Nepa has ever caught my light in my life before. You want more player? What did you go here? Jano Jano want it has never happened because I won't enter a level that I didn't prepare for. Hey, Veloli, hey, Mamu Mishi, I want brother KKK. Sir, ma, what? She wants to serve us. She knows we're level already. I want to be new Lord. Ah, mobile, mobile, no, 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 no,
won ni tori ki mo soro ise lo bi won nu le ni gba ola wa so fun o ke e dagba ge to sise lo because i told them as you see it is not written anywhere in the bible that you pray for money to come the bible says let him that does not have go and walk that he may have to give you are not supposed to beg for money you are not supposed to steal money you are not supposed to what again i didn't hear you borrow money go and walk 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 that's what the bible says so that you need all on comfort mama je ki ma se awon yan le je sure go toro le boy i should continue okay thank you <laughs> yeah, let's rise up do you have any newcomer in the church see so many lives let's just, let's even be sincere so many lives have been destroyed because of this sin of sex fornication oh yeah rise up rise up let's go Let's go home. That's why if you are still in the scene of sexual immorality, go and stop it. Stop it from now. Come out of it. Tell yourself, I don't want to continue in this. Come out of it. It will destroy you. Because once the devil succeeds to create that hole, he will continue to operate. We saw how 23,000 people died in one day because of sexual sin. I want to give you privilege. I'm not calling you out. Don't be afraid. You want to rededicate your life. Where you are, just stand there and begin to pray. Lord, forgive me for sexual errors. Begin to talk to the Lord. Help me. I promise that I will do the right thing from now. You're going to pray. I will, I will live in, in accordance to your word. Begin to talk to the Lord. Begin to talk to the Lord. Bale gadaba sende. Shagadaba sangadaba rebos. Bale gadaba sende. Lege de baskende lebos. Sata yagada. Shagada baskende lebos. Legadaba sata yangada. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. I want to pray for you. But before I pray for you, please learn from this. You know, somebody close to us, I want to say it in such a way that nobody will look towards that direction. If I mention it, even she herself will be glad. She made that mistake too. Got pregnant for the person. But you know what her daddy did? Her daddy did not allow her to get married to that person. Go to school. They took that child from her. Help her to raise the child sent her back to school she, she graduated from school if you are here I don't know who I'm talking to I don't know why the Holy Ghost is pushing me in this direction don't go into marriage prematurely just because of one error I don't know who that person is you have a life to live marriage is just one of the purpose that you have come to the earth to do one not your major purpose father i've delivered your word i pray for your people today let your glorious plan and purpose for their lives come to pass in the name of jesus they've asked for mercy oh god we ask oh god that father let your mercy be released in the name of jesus for a new beginning in the name of Jesus. Every devil that came into that life as a result of the broken edge, I command you to get out now in the name of Jesus. Because repentance has been reached today. That broken edge be built up again in Jesus' name. I pray for you. This week you will prosper. All you lay your hand upon shall prosper. The favor of God will open doors for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Lines shall fall unto you in pleasant places. Amen. You shall move from glory to glory. Amen. 
from favor to favor, from honor to honor, from grace to grace. So it is. In Jesus' name of bread. And amen. Can we share the grace to